Hi, hello and welcome to another episode of Of Course China. My name is Fernando and this is Ziv. And today we are with Rachel Dang. Ziv, want you tell us something about Rachel, please? She's scared about my introduction. <laughs> All right. So Rachel Zhang, <laughs> she is from Zhangjiang, the southeast part of China, just before Hainan Island. She studied university in Guangzhou, business English. Yes. And then she got into uh, the fashion industry first as interpreter and then uh, as a merchandiser. Yeah. And then as account, account manager. Account manager. And then she walked her way up to where she is today, uh, working with AI Denim, Denim as a COO. Thank you for being here, Rachel. Thank you for Welcome inviting me. Welcome to the me. show. Thank you for giving us your time. Well, um, we wanted to talk to you about uh, certain fields and certain items that we, fe- we feel are interesting to our listeners and to our viewers. So we wanted to talk to you first about um, how you got involved with fashion. You summarized it very quickly, but um, the work that you did early, could you tell us a little bit more about your start in the the world of fashion? Oh, I think this is a very interesting question because um, as the first year after I graduated from university, I do like one year interpreter, I feel bored. And then I do an interview in a fashion company who has a very, very fashion uh, office. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Cool office. (laughs) Super cool. It's very important. The office name is Happily. Happily. Happily, Happily, yeah. In Guangzhou, super cool. It's like a tea, you know, it's like a, a, a catwalk show, a uh-huh. catwalk show office. Mm-hmm. Super cool. And then I said, wow, if I, you know, if I'm being employed, I will work here. <laughs> so when you went, you went in, you didn't know before, you went in and you saw the I office went, yeah. for an interview, job yeah, exactly, interview, Exactly, right? exactly. I said, wow, it's really cool. People are look cool fashion and the office are very cool and say, okay, well, I'm in. <laughs> and then after the uh, interview, I say, okay, you are employed. So right after the interview, or they they call you after? Right after. Right interview. there. Yeah. Oh, so you impress them? Yeah, <laughs> with my English. Right. Ah, uh. so okay. <laughs> so you so you joined the, that company in a cool office. You went to every day. Exactly. <laughs> was, it, was it as cool as you thought in the beginning? Really cool. Okay. Even in today, still, still cool. Okay. Yeah, it was designed by a Italian Hong Kong designer. All nice. right. Yeah. It's really cool. And what was your experience there? What was your learning uh, curve over there? How was the, um, how did it help you in your career? That first experience. Okay, I when I started job there, I as a like um, a translator. Mm-hmm. So my job's like to accompany the customers to go to the factory, laundry to look at these things online. I mean mm-hmm. the manufacturing, how to make one garment, how to wash one garment. I mean it's mainly the jeans, mm-hmm. and then I learned very quickly and in very short time. I think around one year, and I re- I learned from the whole process from the very beginning from a fabric, a fabric cutting mm-hmm. to sewing a garment to wash the garment and pack and deliver. So the, you went to the factories with what? With a foreigner, designer? Foreigner, designer and QC. Designer I mean, quality control okay. people. And yeah. then all the information had to go through, through you. you. Yeah, exactly. Translating. So exactly. <laughs> so so you went to the factories, a lot of factories? A lot of factories. Right. Yeah. Free education. <laughs> Ex- <laughs> exactly. Right. Now when you look back, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And mainly, um, mainly focused in Dongguan. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, so that's why I, I experienced quite a lot of Italian restaurant, nice Italian restaurant in Dongguan. Oh, like okay. the Luigi in Sheraton. Luigi in Sheraton. In Sheraton Hoche. Hoche, yeah. Yes, yes, so you know that well. You used to go there. Yeah. We still go there. Quite can often. We, <laughs> can we talk about what was it like for you uh, as a young uh, graduate uh, getting into the world of fashion? What was the job paid uh, at that time? Wow. Uh, it's the amount is quite small actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I start that job, I got proba- probation salary to two thousand five hundred MMB. Which is about how much back US? then? Maybe three hundred dollars back then. Three hundred, yeah, was, three and some, three and five, yeah, three hundred and fifty yeah, US. I, th- I find this interesting because a lot of foreigners out there, when they hear that, well, the salaries are so low in China, they don't understand how do they get to become COO of a company. You know what I mean? And this was probably okay by then, right? I mean, probably the same time for new it's people. It's okay, okay. Like when I get two thousand and five hundred MMB for salary, I pay eight hundred for my rent. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, right? And I don't need 
transportation because I just live be you know near. I saw in very nearby just by walking 15 minutes and I can take it off myself so and my family doesn't need me you know they didn't right, need me to right that's the thing a lot of chinese people need yeah. to send money back home mm-hmm. right I'm fine. you didn't have this issue i'm right, fine yeah right, okay yeah my parents are okay right. so i just take it off myself okay. so it's easy yeah and you told us uh, during the preparation that you actually got a raise very quickly um oh, you yeah. got a salary increase um So probation is usually three months in China. I, yeah. I, I, I uh, yeah. I'm But I passed the probation just one month because my manager think, wow, you're really good. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I want to. I want you to stay. And so that meant how much more money? Seven hundred RMB. More. more. Yeah. Seven hundred US dollar. <laughs> yeah. <basically. laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And after I think like maybe half years later, and I get something more. Right. Okay. Yeah. So What that means you really. Doing yeah, well. very fast. Right, okay. So before I leave that company, uh, just two years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I, I I worked there, and I got five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> What was uh, the working hours like? A lot of people, when they think about China, they hear about the the crazy hours. Were there crazy hours at work? Uh, okay. The normal working hours, like from nine to six. Mm-hmm. And for my previous company, we sh- we work for a half day of Saturday, mm-hmm. and for the n- weekdays night time, it's like it's up to you. Is a lot of uh, overtime? Not really. Not really. Six. I mean, six thirteen. Uh, sorry, six fifteen. It's the normal off off hour, mm-hmm. and normally people will work to maybe seven thirty. And if you do overtime maximum. back then, there's no overtime pay, no, right? No. No. Oh, it's the same salary. my previous company, no. Right. It's the same salary. It's <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. You yeah, need yeah. to do what you need to do, right? Yeah, you need to yeah. finish the task. Yes, basically, exactly. and whatever yeah. right oh, amount of time it takes you. But it's changing now. Sure. I mean, quite a lot of people, yeah, companies are changing their right. rules and ticket of the what, people. What were your priorities with your money at that time, such a young age? Oh. Saving, spending? Oh, I have a very good habit because I will save some money uh-huh. when I get salary. I mean, okay. when I, yeah. Uh, Do you have a rule? Yeah. Like 10%, 15% or? Oh, not really. I just like amount. My, uh, I have two sisters, mm-hmm. uh, elder sisters. I'm the big, the eldest one told me, say, no matter how much you earn, you must save some. Smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You must save some. I say, okay. I've never so been. S- I've never been that smart, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I will try to save like 800 RMB per month. Wow. Yeah. At that time. F- okay. From a three thousand five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty that's good. That's discipline, man. It, okay. It's like <laughs> a fixed. You know. It's like fixed. I must save this part. It's like at that time I was thinking. Okay. I want to. You know. I want to keep save some money and then to buy a car, or to go like holiday. Right. Yeah. Because I never travel abroad. Okay. I never. Yeah. I'm very rare. To travel, right. you wanted me. to travel. Are Chinese people savers mm-hmm. or spenders? In general, in general, what do you think? In general, in general yeah, savers. everybody uh, saves. Savers, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To the to the extent that a lot of people say like, oh, they don't really enjoy life too much. It's just save, 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 save. save, save. save. But what are they saving for? Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe for the future, for the children. Well, it's it's a good thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, it's okay. For example, I. For me, m- me and my husband, we have you know the saving habit, and we save some money, and then okay, we are buying estate. I mean ah, the house, right. real estate. Yeah, yeah, oh. ah, yeah real estate. Yeah, okay. yeah. We're and getting to where I wanted to go to. <laughs> 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 and then we have some saving, and then we can go holiday. Right. Mm-hmm. Because for holiday, actually, it's quite you know it's quite costly. Right. Uh, for me myself, I really like Japan, Europe, Europe, and also as well like Thailand. So you like to spend so money on experience, not just on stupid things that a lot of people buy. <laughs> I spend a lot of money on traveling and as well as buying clothing. <laughs> Fashion. <laughs> Fashion. So, <laughs> so you were saying you were saying you were saving at a young age, so you already had the habit saving, and you said you wanted to travel and you didn't travel before that, right? Yeah. W- w- when was the first I time? I started to travel when I started working after like one and a half years. And where did you go mm. to? Bangkok. You went to ba- only Bangkok? Yeah. For how the long? The first time. Five days. By yourself or on a tour? With friends. Not tour. Oh, oh yeah. the actually, <laughs> actually, I never, I never travel uh, with, uh, the with the tour. Yeah. Never. Yeah, it's the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe spend like with company before uh, with the tour, but I think that's mostly for people that don't speak English, probably. 
yeah, older people, yeah. things like that. How was it? Were you happy in Bangkok? I mean, was happy. it what you expected? Happy. Yes. How say I? I uh, the first time I've been to Bangkok, I started. For, wow, it's quite you know the people are very. They're nice. Very friendly, smiley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, smiley, yeah, yeah. and even they they are not looking very good. I mean, not good looking, but they are very polite, mm-hmm. polite and decent. And the food is great, no? Food is very very yes. good, <laughs> <laughs> and the hotel are great. You've been to Bangkok, Fernando? Yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Khao San Road. Yeah, have to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So you traveled with friends. Yeah. Uh, five days. And did you have any kind of uh, culture shock or anything that impressed you about Bangkok? Oh, uh, you know, I love to do shopping. Okay. All kind of shopping. So when I uh, went to Bangkok, I go to the Chadong Sha, the night market. Okay. It's super big night market. Uh, it just opened like for a weekend. Mm-hmm. But especially pick that period, so we go there and there are a lot of things to see. It's like uh, furniture, uh, clothing, bags, shoes, and you know very funny handicraft things. Mm-hmm. Say, oh, oh, it's really you know, it's really enjoyable, mm-hmm. and you know, and the food are really good, and also the spa. I wonder <laughs> how <laughs> spa. Uh, this is a bit off topic, but like you said, you like to save. You have the habit, which is a good habit to save, but you also say you like shopping. Yeah. Right. How do you buy? How do you shop? Right? How do you shop? Like, do you I just window shopping or like? No, real shopping. Real <laughs> shopping. But I guess you you look like you're very calculated, probably. No, you, I'm not. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're just <laughs> impulse buying. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah? Because I'm not a good calculator. <laughs> so I just like okay, for sure, I have to save this part of money, and the added balance I can spend. All right, so you do have like, uh, yeah, it's like people that I go to the casino. Okay, I'm going to spend this, whatever happens. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just like, okay, this is really, look, really look good. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I take it. So it's like uh, just very impulse, you know. Are you a good negotiator? Chinese Sorry. people are a good negotiator. Negotiate? No, I'm not. You're not? Yeah, okay. I'm not. I just like, okay, go, 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 easy. Okay, okay. <laughs> You're nice. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So we we are going back to um, your experiences in in fashion. Um, how did you set up your company? At what, oh, well, how did you join this company? How did you become COO? Um, yeah, oh, you you, wow. were, you were saying you were in the other company. You were doing. You were going to the factory, right? Uh, every day yes. with with uh, very 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 beginning. I like to learn the you know the whole garment process mm-hmm. uh, during that two years and then I moved to a company in Dongguan called Leisure Star Limited it's also a Hong Kong based company but I have a very very super great boss mm-hmm. he's a Hong Kong he's a Hong Kong guy but he's very good I mean the mentality is super rich and uh, I joined the company as a account uh, manager mm-hmm. and I had I was handling for overseas customers we are doing very good customers very cool and high-end premium brands like what you can uh, say give an example uh, like a scotch and soda like okay. a Dangham okay yeah from Amsterdam mm-hmm. okay. and like Chevignon maybe Chevignon, yeah. No, Chevignon yeah I used to uh, yeah so because it's old brand <laughs> then you started traveling more too yeah and um, but I didn't I didn't travel to Europe that time but uh, I because they came very often I mean the designers uh, the uh, the boss they mm-hmm. come very often so I have the connection with them directly so I start to understand better and better for the design from designer aspect perspective yeah, yeah. perspective and and then, at meantime, I start to um, handling the Chinese market brand. I mean, the Chinese brand. Uh, so, only selling in China. Oh, okay. Yeah, f- from two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I start to understand the difference between Chinese brand, the Chinese retailer, and the overseas retailer. What are some of those differences? Um, the trend direction is different. Mm-hmm. Firstly. And the second is the operating, the operation way is different. Overseas, co- uh, overseas companies, they are very well organized. Everything is in order, you know. Everything planned, is planned well. Planned well, yes. very well, yeah. Yes. But Chinese customers, they are not really in very good planning. Chinese retailers, you mean? Yeah. Uh, and brands? Brands, I brands. mean, brands, right. brands, brands. Mm-hmm. So bra- when we say brands, means like we go to Xinhua Cheng, 
mm-hmm. the shopping mall, t- uh, yeah. then that that dynasty, yeah, yeah dynasty, yes. and you see a lot of brands, right? Right. Mm-hmm. All these brands are my customers now. Oh, okay. so Chinese or uh, foreign brands? Chin- Chinese, 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 Chinese brands too. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, also, one thing very important is uh, foreign foreign companies. They are very well educated by the history of denim, so they understand how what will happen during the production for a jean, a pair of jeans. Okay. But Chinese brand, no. They don't understand so <laughs> why it takes longer or why it looks exactly. like this or like, why. Okay, uh, because denim jeans is like you have to do washing. So it's like doing some handicraft things. So every single pair of jeans will be different. Mm. Right. Okay. But Chinese people and, the, okay, Chinese brand, they, are, they didn't understand. So <laughs> usually, we usually, um, I- inside the company, we say, okay, Every day, I I just beaten the monsters, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they don't understand. Right. They don't understand why it looks like this. But this is back then, or you mean still like that? Back then. Back then. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I have to explain, explain, explain to them why it looks like this, uh-huh. or why it happens, and it's normal, it's mm-hmm. acceptable, it's was intolerance. Is there any year like when denim started to be more popular in China? Was when before what you it wasn't? I mean. Uh, actually, star- I started to work this in uh, 2009 and already very popular already. at the time. Because yeah. I find it interesting. Yeah. Sometimes I talk to my students, right, my teenager students, and I ask them, hey, do your parents ever wear jeans? And I'm like, no. no. Yeah. Do you own jeans? No. Okay, this is like a fixed culture in China. In the companies, I mean, they're very like, uh, you know, decent company uh-huh. and people cannot wear jeans very to, formal to go attire. to work. Yeah, yeah, they would have to wear uniforms and at least it's like a wearing the very like a shirt, you know, or chinos Je- or uniforms. Jeans yeah. is not cannot official wear. enough? Yeah, is jeans, jeans is, no. jeans <laughs> is <laughs> like casual, you know, it's so casual, informal. casual right. look. But and and then uh, we have a international brand called D Squared. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you guys heard I about heard of it. D Squared D Squared. Okay. It's an Italian Italian uh, jeans brand. Uh, it's very expensive, and the consumers are mainly the football players. Oh, okay. Is it charging? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seven thousand RMB oh, wow. pair of jeans. So you mean the Chinese football players? In no, China? international. International. Football international. Players. Yeah. Okay. Seven thousand RMB for a pair yeah, of jeans. Yeah. Yeah. So start from three thousand to seven thousand. Yeah. One pair of jeans, yeah. So it's like buying <laughs> Gucci. It's like buying something yeah, for the name. It's like a, exactly. <laughs> I, I have to. You don't have to answer if you don't want. But I mean, that seven thousand pair of jeans. How much does it cost in the factory to make it? Oh, <laughs> it's okay. I mean, okay. This is not for the Chinese market. So <laughs> <laughs> this podcast no, I goes mean, abroad. I don't think anyone would be surprised. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if you tell me a hundred RMB or fifty yeah. RMB. So <laughs> okay, actually, it's like starting from. I mean, the purchasing. I mean, the cost. Uh, someone spent like four dollars to buy a pair of jeans. Mm-hmm. Right, but, but then you get what you some, pay. Some, yeah, exactly. Right. Some spend like thirty US to buy one pair of jeans. Right. The quality tells the difference. Of course. Yeah. The the better one may you can keep it for twenty years. Or exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe for some they are really like costly, costing like seventy US per. Right. Pair of jeans because really? they are using the salvage denim. Salvage denim. Salvage denim, salvage denim yeah. means like the very furbish? narrow, oh, okay. very narrow uh, width. Okay. Okay. Normal, like okay, a normal width of a fab denim fabric. It's like um, for fifty five inches mm-hmm. for the width, the fabric width. But the salvage denim means thirty inches. So only. there's less to yeah it's smaller i mean the, the width is very small so you have to the the, the consumption you you need to buy more so fabric you, so you to say okay so that, just yeah. to, to understand what you said you said it could be a pair of jeans that actually cost 70 dollars to make yes that can happen yeah but still it's been sold for <laughs> seven thousand <000. laughs> yeah <laughs> all right but i mean that that makes sense fashion you know advertising yeah. marketing all of that exactly. uh, calculated into into that Sp- yes spend a lot for advertising and marketing you know now what is jeans? I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do they make jeans from? What, what is it? Oh. Denim. Okay. When we're doing the preparation, we were discussing a little bit right. about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So denim, this word comes from a, actually it's like a French town, Nîmes, called Nîmes. And they, 
very origin original is like they have a heavy canvas fabric and very heavy one uh, in kind of like a brown or a green color and finally they they call it a special fabric they call denim because it, uh, basically denim is like means from fabric yeah from fabric, of, yeah, fabric ah, of names. yeah fabric of okay. names yeah okay. fabric so of like names like means champagne. like okay this is like something yeah yeah exactly so f- and then it becomes a word denim Okay. Yeah. The actual word the so means from. When was yeah. that? How how old is this story? Wow. 1800s. So yeah. this is I mean the origin of, of the So originally yeah. it's from, it's from Levi Strauss. From there. Levi Strauss. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then uh okay, it comes from Fran- from France, but finally it's become popular because of the golden the golden years the gold in rush. The gold yeah rush. the gold, gold rush, rush in, in California age yeah. in America yeah and the workers are wearing the uniforms uh, with a lot of big pockets you know put things and the gold inside and it needs to be strong they were exactly they exactly worked in mines they worked in rivers yeah. so they needed fabrics that were really resistant very heavy yes. and very you know very it would last a long time and exactly. protect them as well exactly yeah and then finally becomes like a uh, Levi's Levi Strauss, the right. first yeah, pair of jeans uh, comes from them. This 505. brand. Five oh five, right? Yeah, five oh one. Five oh five. 505, the first one. Wow. No, no, I don't know which 501. is. 501. 501 is the famous <laughs> one. Oh, you surprised me. There, is also, really? there must be 505 too. <laughs> there is 505. <laughs> I know 505. The different cards, right? All of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's coming from Nim. Yeah. Is still a lot of jeans coming from Nim? No. Or no. no. It's, this is no. like all history. All oh, history. history yeah. But the okay. interesting thing is that very few people know where the name right. jeans right. comes from. I didn't know until now. Oh, where does it come from? Ah, I actually, no I idea. still don't know. You're I talking mean, about no, jeans. Uh, the word jeans. Know. Jeans. Sounds Nobody American, really right? Sound American. Jeans. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, something to learn later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. I tell you guys. What I know and what I research for this is that nobody knows where the word comes from. Ah, jeans. you research that and nobody yes, knows. Yes, people know where the word denim comes yeah. from, but the word, the actual word jeans, nobody knows where it Maybe comes from. If uh, anybody knows, just leave it in the comment section. Jeans. They, they must they <laughs> know. Can I speak in Cantonese? Yeah, you can Google it there. <laughs> So so, where where is it where is it coming from today? Everywhere, everywhere, like everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, because the demand is very big. Right. It's is huge. It, is it cotton? A cotton, yeah. Okay. The main material for denim fabric is cotton. Mm. Yeah, cotton, oh, okay. polyester, and spandex. So it's mixed. Spandex. Yeah. I want to I want to talk about fashion and and where fashion comes from. When I started wearing jeans, the fashion was baggy jeans. Those ah. hip hop that you wear around, the, you know, that you can see the your middle underwear. waist. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the middle. Sorry, the middle. But, hip. What <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, nowadays you have all the skinny jeans. What kind of jeans your dad wore? What, what? My dad used like just factory jeans. That's what he used to wear. I just remember like my dad trying the jeans on cut. the floor with a wallet in the back. Like every night, it's just there. And yeah, but I mean the ba- baggy jeans. Um, yeah, now it's now I see a lot. I mean. Like I very, have very one. Very skinny jeans. Skinny jeans, yes. Yeah, and jeans. very high. Like like they don't have enough money to pay for the fabric. It's just like they need. <laughs> you mean low? No. Well, very low and v- no. for boys, yeah. very oh. high. Oh, 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 oh. Like you can see, I have their the their yes, their yes. ankle. I don't fashion. Really know. Fashion. It's this all, is yeah. fashion. It's fashion. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Or those girls that wear very, very low jeans, and whenever they sit or something, like. Mm. How many <laughs> pairs of jeans do you have, Fernando? Uh, like three? Three? Maybe, three or four? Maybe I should invite I you like guys to my showroom. Have like eight, uh, nine. We would love to get nine? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but you gotta have like a couple blue ones, then a light blue, then a black no, one. No, I always go for dark blue because they last longer. Then a skinny I'm one, then a. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, tell me your size later, and then I. Yeah, present you guys a pair of jeans. We're not I don't want to say. My yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's the opposite uh, roles here. Women shouldn't say right. No, <laughs> sh- women don't talk yeah. about their age. We don't talk about our yeah. jeans size. size. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what kind of jeans is fashionable in China? If we're talking about uh, our dads here, you know, yeah. this is like we're talking about sixty years ago. In you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I have a very um, interesting conversation with my uh, partner. He is a uh, English. Okay. That lives in in Hong Kong, uh-huh. and he he was a fitting models for twenty years before, huh? and fitting then model, yeah, okay. fitting models yeah. What size is fitting model in jeans? <laughs> I know the shoes, but thirty three maybe thirty two yeah thirty two like yeah 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 thirty two is like that perfect size I guess standard yeah. size. 
Standard. That used to be my jean yes. size. <laughs> and then you have the other number for the length, <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. 32 <laughs> inches, 34 inches, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, the, the, is, is the, the cut of uh, the design different? For, very for China, different. I mean, for China and Western, because when I buy jeans in China, mm -hmm. I buy Giordano, which are cheap. Yeah. They feel very uncomfortable around my back. Okay. This is real. This is real. Because okay. the... It's not just me. It's not your problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the designers. Because okay. the Chinese body, I mean, the fit, it's very different from overseas. Okay. So, so for so example, when I, you know, work in fashion uh, as the first job, I start to learn, oh, okay. So me, I just fit for the you know, the, f the overseas brand jeans. Mm -hmm. I cannot fit in the Chinese brand jeans because I have, a sh th my shape is quite, kind of like Europeans. I mean, for, <laughs> for bottoms. More round. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the right one. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> and then um, I start to understand, oh, okay, so different, the brand they sell in different country. Mm -hmm. So they have to learn, mm. You know, yes. what kind of shape, right. you know, that country, people. You so know. it's really like many different, I a guess. A lot. I mean, I guess you have Europe, South America is different. Yeah. I would say yeah. Body types? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You go yeah, to Brazil yeah. and you need right. more yeah. yards. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, this yes, is, I'm really true. looking for this kind of customers. <laughs> <laughs> you right. want to sell in yeah. Brazil <laughs> yeah. alright guys we're going to take a very very short break and we will be back with Rachel Jang and the talk about jeans alright we're back with Rachel Jang hi yep. and it's time for our infamous game this or that so Rachel the way this goes is, the, is very simple mm -hmm. we are going to give you a couple of options and you need to choose one of those and you need to tell us why you choose this one or the other okay okay so i'm gonna let ziv start with this question the first one is uh, uh <laughs> it's uh, the most uh ask one jeans mm -hmm. skirt or dress jeans skirt. skirt or dress what do you prefer to wear you mean to to, to wear to, cho to choose from the three yes yeah. choose one what's your favorite jeans jeans yeah I think the, 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 the why should be the whole podcast is the why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, keeping on with the fashion thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gucci or Prada? No, none of them. No. Mm -hmm. You're the second one that said that. I don't like that. I don't like these two. All Which right. one do you prefer? So, what's your? I, my taste is more like the more casual and vintage look things. Okay, yeah, okay. not like this kind of luxury brands. I, I never own one of this kind of bag from no? this brand. Yeah, I don't oh, like All right, all right. But I would spend money to buy a handicraft bag from Colombia, like a YU bag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next one is accents USA or UK? Which accent? English you accent. Um, you in between, can I say? Sure. In between? <laughs> yeah. Which accent is that? Like a half uh, mother <laughs> is a UK and the father is from the USA or something like that? <laughs> British spelling but American accent. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? America. American. Yeah. American? American. Said the Californian perfect accent. Yeah, the yeah. Californian foreign teacher. This was the first foreign teacher I, you know, I met with. And mm -hmm. his perfect accents were, wow, sounds so good. Oh, no, Surfing English, dude. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. You're Chinese, so I need to ask you this question. Yeah. Hot water or iced water? Normally, I drink hot water. You drink iced water <laughs> today? Yeah. 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 <laughs> today is warm. It's hot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I feel warm inside. But Chinese yeah. people drink warm water even when it's warm. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's yes. a solution for everything. It's, uh, of course, exactly. China. It's oh, I have a sore throat. Drink some hot water. So, yeah, when we are in Japan, I mean traveling, say, no, no hot water here. <laughs> Only tea. <laughs> Hot tea, no <laughs> hot water. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, of course, China moments. <laughs> um, all right. So this is another uh, a Chinese food-related yeah. uh, question. Noodles or rice? Rice. Absolutely rice. Absolutely rice. Mm -hmm. You are yeah. not from Dongbei. I can see that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. 
right. I'm more like you than uh, than I am my wife. My wife is noodles all the time. <laughs> all right, next one. <laughs> um, sandals. Yeah. High heels or sneakers. Uh, sneaker. S uh, high heels, not for me. No. Yeah, no. Uh, sneakers and sandals. All right. But it's the not the high heel sandals. I could, I could, I could see that answer coming from the no Gucci, no Prada. Yeah. No <laughs> high heels. Yeah. Kind of that style. Uh, yeah, 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 I, sneakers. I cannot bear the very wow, like super tight dress. You're and more casual. Uh, yeah, more Jeans. casual. Comfortable. Yeah, right. yeah, comfortable. And look fashion. All right. Next one is iPhone or Android iPhone, absolutely. Absolutely, always. I never yes. use Android. What happened to women that don't go Huawei, Oppo? <laughs> I love Zhongguo so much. <laughs> but but I cannot. Still phone, no. That's iPhone. Uh, yeah, yeah, just get used to, you know. Yeah. My love for the country goes so far. Yeah. <laughs> Next <Okay>. one. <laughs> for me, um, you drive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which car do you prefer? Automatic or manual? Automatic. <laughs> I don't talk about that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My last one is this one. People, which one you prefer? Italians or French? <laughs> <laughs> Hard one. Chinese, okay. <laughs> Can I choose from Italian and French? I didn't have the... It was nice. Okay. It was Ita I actually am okay with Italian people. Uh -huh. But I have a not so happy experience with a French people, a French guy. Uh -huh. I mean, so right. I. Uh, yeah. so that's Italian for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm and I finished Italian with friends. one that uh, is close to my home. Yeah. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Never. T no tea. Okay. Uh, she likes China, but iPhone and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, tea, tea and coffee both are very regular for my working days. I mean, uh -huh. very regular. Every day I drink tea, I drink hot water and drink coffee. So okay. normally, yeah, basically one cup of coffee per day. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe one cup of... Like one in the morning or... Uh, normally morning time. Yeah, sometimes second cup of coffee in the afternoon. Can I after lunch break. One follow-up unplanned question. Since you said coffee, how about Starbucks or Luckin? <laughs> Very timely question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I read the um, the the Subway passage of right, uh, right. of yeah the of lacking. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's but regardless to that, I mean the taste. Yeah. Oh, the taste. Yeah. Uh, for me, Starbucks. Really? Yeah. I've, I've never tried lacking. I have to say, for me, lacking. I've I never try, tried. Lucky. I try lacking as well. But I think that that name is that's very unfortunate. Lacking. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah. It doesn't mean anything, and and, and yeah. if you if you look at the font, yeah. it looks like the no Facebook. G. No, it looks like the Facebook font. Yeah. So the first letter looks more so. like an F. I guess so. So, <laughs> right. You understand what so he means, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so you prefer the taste of uh, Starbucks. All right. Yeah. And this was this, this or that. Yeah. All right, cool, Rachel. So let's continue talking a little bit about your travel because some of the things that I see from, from your WeChat is that you do travel quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so can you tell us some of the places that you've been to for work or for pleasure? Which ones have impressed you the most? Uh, let's talk about travel. So, uh, Yeah, I love travel a lot. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I built up this company and I especially uh, keep the overseas business, even though my big boss asked me not to do so. <laughs> <laughs> but I keep, I keep that part because I love to travel. Yeah, I enjoy very much to, you know, to look to see the new things, the new environment. Where's the best places to see the new uh, things? For now, I for think... For fashion. Yeah, I think Amsterdam. Amsterdam. And Antwerp, a really nice place. Um, been to Amsterdam. I would. Uh, have you done the Amsterdam thing? Oh, I didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> you mean riding a bicycle? <laughs> Jim <Jinping>. Bing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Amsterdam and Antwerp. That's interesting. I, I would not guess that. I mean, I'm not mm. in fashion, but uh, uh, Amsterdam. It's a denim of a city of denim. Denim. Yeah, okay. full of denim of indigo, the culture, everything, and canals. Canals. Yes. Yeah. Canals are really peaceful you right. know peaceful scenes 
I love. I really enjoy a lot. So do, do they innovate with denim in Amsterdam? I mean, it's like, do you get fashion from there? You get what do you what do you get when you travel there? It's mostly selling to them. Oh, yeah, because I have customers there. You have customers. Yeah, there. custom. I uh, like Denham, Scotch and Soda. Right. They comes from Amsterdam, so their headquarters are there. So basically, I w- I pay a visit there like at least one time a year because mm-hmm. there is a big denim show. In April and October. In October. In, no, in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. Amsterdam okay. Yeah. A very famous denim show called Campaign Show. Okay. Yeah, it's a American, you know, American build up show. But it's like a food of denim dudes. <laughs> Super cool <laughs> denim dudes, you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and what about Antwerp? Uh, Antwerp. Okay. Antwerp, it's like a city of diamond and right. fashion. Yeah, of right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time that you went um, to Europe, uh, did you feel any kind of culture shock? Was there anything that was a little bit surprised, uh, surprising, or did you have any funny moments? Uh? For me, it's quite okay because I've been working with foreigners and uh, Hong Kong people for a super long time, mm-hmm. and so I understand their culture. Mm-hmm. I know how to act to be, I mean, to be decent. Mm-hmm. You know, you know how, what is the very Chinese behavior, and what is something that they are. They didn't expect it. You, you know, act. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it yeah, for Europeans? For, people for example, if you go or? to France and you say, "Can I have a cup of a glass of uh, hot water?" <laughs> right. That's I think anywhere in the Western like, world, what? right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any any specific thing for like uh, uh, Holland, Amsterdam? That I mean, I've never been. No, but did you? For example, did you um, go to the? Because um, a lot of tourists go to the red. Red District. Right. Just to check it out, though, as a tourist, right? Yeah. The red windows, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. actually, uh, normally I don't stay in hotel in Amsterdam. I stay in Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah, last October I was there, and then I will stay in the Airbnb just in the middle of the Red District. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Is that a shock? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, like a one meter di- distance. <laughs> <laughs> and we we walk through the whole district <laughs> with my English colleague. And what's the uh, what's the conversation we're just like? Just Hey, 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 Martin. Because his name is Martin Sullivan. We say, hey, Martin, that one looks good. <laughs> 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 and we say, wow, it's like a really full, different kind of you know, different kind of pretty women's, <laughs> different kind. Different kind. Different kind. Different, different, shapes, different, different sizes. Different yeah. shape. Different yeah. size. Yeah. Different yeah. skin colors. Sure. Different look. It's mm. quite a unique it's place in the world, anyway, right? I've never I been. Mean, yeah, it's legal. I've never been, it's legal. You should be yeah. there. Oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are there other Chinese people travel to Amsterdam? Uh, yes. Is it like a popular destination? Uh, not really for the not very f- normal Chinese people, but right. for people who work in this in uh, this field. Yeah, this industry. And how about uh, like? Are there many Chinese? Descendant Chinese uh, people living there, yeah. like in many cities in the I world. I have a friend. Are. Yeah, I have right. a friend. She is a her. Okay, her uh, daddy is from Hong Kong, mm. and his mom from Wenzhou of China. But she was born in Holland. Okay. Yeah, and she speak very good Dutch and very good perfect English, and I can tell the difference between she looks like Chinese. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she acts. Everything's like a, you know, Dutch. Oh. <laughs> when you when you f- talk to about traveling, right? So you travel a lot. We'll talk about it more. But when you travel to places and you meet Chinese people that are that live there, some mm-hmm. of them, uh, you know, uh, maybe they were born there or maybe they they moved there for work. Are they different than Chinese people in China? Yes. I and mean, living abroad changes then. Mm, yes. And how? Hard questions. Hard question. Yeah, it's not very easy to describe. Open-minded, I guess, like anyone that travels and lives in other places, open-minded. More open-minded. Yeah. Yeah. How say? Um, if people could travel often and they see different culture, and they start, and I mean, people can start to understand, culture is kind of like a different skin color of the people. So it's very natural, you know, it's natural things existing in the world. It's not something like you, it's just normal. 
It was in different areas of yes. the world. Did you ever did it ever cross your mind to live in other countries? Well, I really love to live in Amsterdam. Yeah. For some seasons. Okay, for some yeah. time. Some time, yeah. <laughs> right. No winter. <laughs> no winter. No for S- not for autumn. You, you were talking about this um how how different cultures are like different colors of a skin. When you have this exposure to the West, does your idea of China change? Do you see China differently? Do you feel That's China even a differently? Do you wish China were a little bit more like this, okay, a little bit more like that? Yeah, the first time I were I was in uh, Paris, I enjoy a lot of one thing: the outsider of a restaurant and the the cafe. The cafe. Yeah, uh, really enjoyable because the 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 culture is very normal there in Paris, and every you know every area, the outside area of a single restaurant, they have the, the heater. Mm-hmm. Even in like uh, winter time, and people feel very comfortable outside. I say, wow, it's really cool. And but in, I, ho- I really hope And they're China, not just on their phones. Exactly. And they don't play the dice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. this is a very typical difference between the Europeans, or I mean the foreigners and Chinese. It's now. not all foreigners, actually. It's, it's, it it's, is it's Europe, very, Europe. I'm very specific Europe. about Paris. Yeah, Vienna, places like that, I think. Yeah, some mm-hmm. places in Europe, yeah. yeah I it's think not all the world like that. Yeah, yeah, I think in uh, Paris and Amsterdam, yeah. Also? N- no one look at the phones like, you know, we, we right. sit here, but we look like this. Right. This is very normal in China now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and as I say, feel more, okay, we are really in connection. I mean, when you sit there mm-hmm. and you talk, you really treasure the time you sitting together to to talk. It's right. not like a killing the time. So in Asia, yeah. they do this more, I guess. But I mean, all over the world now, it's it's becoming more and more prevalent. It's also an age thing, not just the s- younger not generations. Not just location, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Look, I, I wanted to I wanted to ask you. Uh, this is something that I'm very interested in. Um, when you go abroad, mm-hmm. do you feel more free? A lot of people say like, oh, in China, there's no freedom. We have no freedom. Blah blah no, blah. No, I don't feel so. No? I feel good in China as well. You so there's no difference? For me, not really. I don't find a big difference. Yeah. Okay. That's not fair. So, not so... No, it's, it's a good know. perspective from a Chinese person who's been abroad. Yeah. Like, like, honestly, yeah. Because yeah. the thing is that a lot of... Sorry, sorry that I interrupt mm-hmm. you, but a lot of people say like, oh, when a foreigner says that they feel free in China, they say like, oh, you just, you just a shill, yeah. you just propaganda from... Yeah. You're but coming from a ch- is different. Is a Chinese person that's been abroad and is saying the same thing. So yeah. I'm I'm pretty happy with that answer. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can't have a, a red district here. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, or right. the other things that you were talking about in Amsterdam. <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the person. I, I I do believe you when you say that. I mean, because honestly, I, okay. For um, I because if I don't do something, not because I don't f- um, allow to do just because I don't want to do. Right. So, these kind of things. So you never had oh the experience. Yeah, I don't, you yeah, never had I the experience of not feeling free. That's what you mean, in China. I guess that's... No, I, I mean, I feel free in China. Right, that's So what I'm I don't need to search for that feeling abroad. Mm-hmm. Right, so it feels yeah. the same for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you can do what you want. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, you also travel to Japan. Tell us a little bit about... Very um, often. Very often. Is this yeah. for work or for pleasure? Uh, both. Both. Yeah, both. I love Japan because Japan is very clean. Uh huh. Yeah, very clean. I mean, the yes, streets. Yes, it is very clean. Have you been? No, I haven't been I've to been Japan. Oh, really? But uh, a lot go. of people it's say it's extremely that it's clean. To Singapore. Super clean. Okay. But there's an education. You've been to Singapore? Singapore is also super clean. And people say that it's almost the same. I don't know. Oh, maybe it's the same. i never been to Singapore, but I heard about that. Mm. And okay, I can take like a for in- example. I have a designer friend. Uh, she smokes. Mm-hmm. She smokes, and when we do a like a fashion show um, after that, and we go out for like a easy chatting, and she smokes, and then he she took from his uh, her handbag a very small like uh, the trash, very small <laughs> one, and like, a small like this kind of squ- a- yeah ashtray yeah. exactly. Thank you. And I was like, what is that? Say ashtray. So wow, you. She's Japanese. Yeah, she's Japanese. Okay. 
Wow, so you hand carry a ashtray with you? So, yeah, everybody do so in, in, in Japan. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> that means even like this kind of, you know, the, uh, yeah. the ashtray you, you put and in. The, ash, the ashes and, and the butt, the, butt, the cigarette yes. butt also. But I mean, yeah. that's, I think uh, it is very much rooted in education, right? Like yeah. I heard that I in the schools, they, they, the kids clean like in different, you know, shifts or whatever, they teach the kids to clean from Japanese very young people age. are very, very good to follow the rules and discipline. I think that there's also heavy penalties. Yeah, exactly. Heavy penalties. I, so have, like a, I have a very close friend, a Japanese friend, and also in, for my company, we have a cha- Japanese agent, and he, she, uh, sorry, he lives in Okayama, and he told me why the corona virus is well controlled in japan not because of the government controlling but just because of the people who is just get used to very clean yeah Hygienic. clean and very disciplined you know stick right. to that so people just stay home go don't go out but a lot of people say that uh, in china people are very disciplined uh, yeah so well, the, the the response here has been I, I surprising I think the me. culture here is very complicated. It's not like it's discipline in some uh, things and in some things so not. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is what we call f- flexibility. Flexi- <laughs> flexibility, <laughs> yes. right. Flexible flexi- implementation flexi- of the flexibility. rules. Yeah, Ch- yeah, Japanese people are less flexible. I, I give you no, an example. No, Japanese no, but Chinese yes. In China, uh, it was about the same time that the government passed the rule about the seat belts yeah. and the no talking on the phone when you're driving. Mm-hmm. From one day to the other, everybody started wearing seat belts. But everybody kept on Keep talking looking. on the phone. They're flexible. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like I'll choose. Pick they're and flexible. In China? Yeah, they're flexible to yeah. choose, to pick and choose. Yes. Like <laughs> what they, they do or not. We will judge if it's really affecting, you know, the something very real. So, so I will go back to Fernando's questions before when we talked about Europe and ask this about Japan. Yeah. When you see anything you see in Japan that you wish a little bit that maybe China would be like. Is it one of these Clean. things? Clean. Cleanness. Clean cleanness, and yeah. in order. <coughs> order. In order. C- the first time I was in Japan is like 2009. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been to Tokyo. And then I see, okay, two things. Firstly, I uh, we visit a lot of stores. And uh, people, I mean, the salespeople inside just saying, uh, welcome. They mm-hmm. like, or welcome, enjoy. And then they just walk away. I do not there with you. <laughs> I know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah, but in China, it's like yes. <laughs> when you come in the shop, <laughs> right. I will follow you. Yes. Yeah. I will keep my oh, eye try, on you. Try, try being a foreigner in China. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you eat the restaurant, they're standing there looking. Yeah, yeah and then feel like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm not a thief. You know, I just, I, I want to enjoy <laughs> my shopping. So uh, <laughs> when I need you, I will call you. In China, when it happens, as a Chinese person, what do you do? Well, like, like you go into the store, you know, they follow you. They're like, uh, you know, just leave me alone, right? I mean, um, I'm just looking. You know, sometimes you, we think it's because we are foreigners, but I guess it happens to Chinese too. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You just tell them, hey, I'm okay. You can go. Yeah. yeah. Now, for now, I'm just that, doing I guess so. that everybody works on commission, so this is my commission. Exactly. Yeah, I'm peeing on this tree. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Don't take my this commission. This is my guest. Yeah, yeah correct. Exactly. So in Japan, it's okay. They leave you alone. <laughs> yes. They, they, yeah. they leave you alone, and then you, if you need, you say, hey, it's pleasant. Someone will come. It's pleasant. Yeah. I've been to Japan. It's really nice. But what about the other side? What about things that China better? You know, like society. Well, they're anything? difficult to accept from, from Japan. Yeah. What would be difficult? Like Japan is kind of strange. Anything? Mm-hmm. They're very strict, yeah, right? Like people say that they're very cold sometimes. Japanese? Mm-hmm. No. Like like they're very they're very cordial, but getting close to them at a personal level um, it's a little oh, bit difficult. They will keep some distance. Mm-hmm. They're less casual. Yeah. Like official kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like like I'm working mode all the yes, time. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, they they just want to keep some distance, not so like so close with you. But okay. I guess after you have friends, is it different? It's different. It's yeah, different after it's you different. get to know each other and yeah. everything. They they act all the time just decent and polite. What about your food experiences? I mean, we're talking about Europe, Japan, uh, Paris. Um. Oh, I'm very I'm a very flexible Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you eat everything. I eat everything and enjoy 
every kind of food. So uh, when I um, I stay in Europe for 13, 11 days, uh-huh. I'm okay. I'm okay. I just ate one time the Vietnam pho. I mean the uh-huh. noodles. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm okay. I just eat steak. Steak. Yeah, steak. So I feel <laughs> good. Mm. You eat the you eat the the chips in in Amsterdam. The French yeah, fries. Yeah, the of course. Ones, yeah? Of course. Yeah. Right. So what what is your favorite? I mean, as a Chinese that travels uh, um, quite often, what is your favorite uh, non Chinese food? What's your favorite? You said steak, but steak is boring. I mean, steak. You know. Well, steak. Wha- what, what what is what is <laughs> any other thing? Like uh, you like pizza or or. Uh, normal pizza for me, normal just spaghetti no, so, so. and pizza, so so. Yeah, sometimes we'll get very excited if I taste some very good and very good taste. Mm-hmm. Um, stick, I really love love. How many days it takes you when you travel to be in another place until you're really craving Chinese food? <laughs> Probably longer than me. Maybe, <laughs> 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 like last October, I stay in. 11 days, and I never had the... Really? Yeah. I never I, had I, the need to have yeah, Chinese, like, food. Oh, Chinese food. Chinese uh, food. But I really, one day, I start to feel maybe the sa- the, the seventh day. Yeah. I feel, oh, no, 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 no. I have to, you know, I need some right. soup. 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 Oh. Yeah. I, I, I don't know about <laughs> you, Fernando, but same. it takes me a week, and then <laughs> I, I miss Hunan food. No, I, for I me, really miss for Hunan me, food. Sichuan food. Yeah, Sichuan food. I think I was born in Sichuan last life in your past life for for, yeah. for me whenever i i travel or go back home for a standard so period of time i i really miss um uh lamb lamb you miss lamb. Oh, lamb the, lamb. I, oh, the xinjiang yeah. oh, lamb. the fatty mm. <laughs> yes, yes but we don't have that <laughs> in, in <my> country. <laughs> that's that's the first thing i miss when i get back home on holiday the ch- chinese food yeah chinese. yes oh yeah, that's the first thing hot i miss pot. no no hot pot hot pot i mean why would I want to cook for myself? I go out for a restaurant. I want yeah, someone else to cook me. for me. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, hot pot never like. Uh, oh, you remind me. I I love oyster. Oyster. Yeah. Raw. Raw. So you oh mean like God. like uh, really tasty? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I taste one time in Paris. There is a I think it's the best oyster restaurant in town. I want to say huh. Paris. Yeah. Super good. Super good. Super expensive. Expensive, yes. but super good. Have you tried frog in China and frog legs in Paris? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to specific here. Hey, um, why you ask though? I no, mean, because Chinese people eat frog, and a lot of foreigners like they eat frog. Well, they but also they eat frog in Paris right, in France. It's right. not a big deal, right? Like chicken feet, we eat chicken feet I in Colombia. Do you? Yeah. yeah. That's why you like it so much, Fernando. That's why I like ah, it. Yeah. Okay. It's a piece of home. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So, we, so we, we're talking about Japan, right? You go to Japan uh, once a year, you say, or more, right? Twice a year. Twice a year. Is it so you're saying for business and pleasure mm-hmm. at the same time, or you do different trips? Separate. Separate. Yeah, trips. separate. Normally, I go for, a tra- uh, for, a, for a leisure. Is with family. All right. I always travel with family. Uh, I mean, after I have family. All right. So let's take a break and keep talking about traveling and other stuff later. Yeah, with Rachel Jang. We'll be back in a second. All right. And we are back with Rachel Jang. And now we play another game, a very fun game called Mm -hmm. What's Up With This? The idea, Ms. Dong, is that I'm going to show you a few pictures and you give us some context. You tell us a story behind that, okay? Okay. So we're going to start with this picture. So you're going to tell us what's up with this. What did you get there? Oh. (laughs) Okay. What did you see there? uh, Okay. It was happened in Hokkaido, in Niseko. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's Japan. a you know, yeah, the snow mountain. And I went up to a very high mountain with my husband. <laughs> he encouraged me to, to, to go with him. I said you okay, well, I was upgrading a little bit this year. How high? So let's go. Wow. Taking the um the cable car is like twenty five minutes. Oh wow. A bit high. Quite high. Quite high. For skiing? For is it, yeah. s- is yeah. it snowboards? No, no my husband skiing. plays snowboard. Snowboard. I play ski, yeah. Okay. And my son play my, my son plays snowboard as well. And then when I when I arrived, they say, oh, I can't go down. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and just like yeah. that, it's this super becomes a high. How, when did you start <laughs> doing that? Like uh, skiing? Skiing. Four years ago, I 
in Japan or in Japan. Okay. I uh, have a very good friend, a couple, and they are the godfather and godmother for my ki- for my kids, and as well, uh, the 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 godfather was my ex boss. Mm-hmm. So we are very good, like families, mm-hmm. and they love snowboard. So they really, you know, ask me ask us to join every year. Say, okay, we go, we are in. But you guys have your own gear, or you rent it, or oh, you mean the ski? Yeah, yeah, I rent them. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah I, I rent. I them. never done ski. Uh, you sna- snowboard there or is, there is? <laughs> I've no? never never snowboard, but I did uh, grass. You can ski yeah. on grass. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's different. There is oh, no much yeah. Yeah. snow in the Middle East. Oh, you know, uh, uh, yeah. you, you play in the... In the, in the <laughs> you can do sand dunes. Sand dunes, yeah. <laughs> ah, in th- so tell us about, how did you get from that mountain then? Wow, it's really so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not in the picture. The picture looks good. You know, you yeah. know what? I say, okay, I say, hey, um, took a picture for me. <laughs> and then he said, Just before for I sure, fall. for sure, yeah. And then, you know, you look good. So you must go down by yourself. Like <laughs> After I took this, I moved from, you know, this angle is super stiff, uh-huh. super stiff. I said, no, I cannot. So I took off my ski. And <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> okay. All right. No shame in that. That's not in the picture. But in the, you know, in just a part. Okay. And then I start to do by myself. <laughs> All right. All right. So and yeah. the next picture is this. What is this? Oh, this was took in Antwerp. In Antwerp. Oh. Yeah, it's in Antwerp. It's a uh, Izimiyaki shop. Okay. Yeah, I, the night I just arrived in Antwerp, I go, I stay in Hilton, and it's the store just beside of Hilton. Uh-huh. And, um, and I said, wow, it looked good. Because Izimiyaki at that period, they just finished a very nice looking, very, very creative colorful. show. Yeah, very colorful. I don't see any denim there. Oh, <laughs> they don't have. No. Yeah. Is it Miyaki is Fashion. a brand that you would buy? It's too expensive. Okay. <laughs> How expensive? Wow. Uh, do you know the puzzle bag? The puzzle bag. Yeah. Uh, the it's from Is Miyaki. Yeah. Yeah. Bad bag. Oh, okay. Bow bow. Bow bow. Yeah. Uh, they call that bag a bow bow. That's expensive. Very much. Yeah. All so right. Cool. That's the game. What's up with this? Yeah. We continue with our conversation. So we were talking about traveling. We were talking about Japan and Ziv. You had an interesting question that you wanted to ask, uh, Rachel. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask about the because I'm I'm from Israel. Mm-hmm. I'm Jewish. Mm-hmm. You know, we had issues with Germany in the World War, right? And there is some uh, uh, feelings that came after that, right? Uh, throughout the years, you see, even though it's 70, 80 years now, mm-hmm. and uh, I know China and Japan has a similar issue, right? Um, and so so. People, people, but Chinese people love traveling to Japan, the food and everything. When you travel to Japan, do you have any feelings regarding that? Do you, does it, is it even in your, in your mind, on your mind? Um, oh, yeah, actually, yes. Uh, for me, myself, I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on fashion and, you know, the food in Japan. But sometimes when, there's, there was one time we go to Sapporo, mm-hmm. Sapporo, uh, Hokkaido. And the there was a sunny day. It was a sunny day, and then we say, "Hey, what about we go to the temple? You know, mm-hmm. it's a very famous temple, and to take some pictures. You know, look very good. The red, the red one." And then my my friends they are going, but my husband he refused to do so because he feels like um, it's kind of you know. What is it? It doesn't. It doesn't feel right to. Yeah. Pay his respect or yeah. something like he that. He doesn't feel right to like have fun in a Japanese temple. Okay. I see. Yeah, because it um, hurts, you know, hurts from the history. Okay. Yeah. S- so how did that conversation go between you and your husband? I mean. Yeah, as I say, hey, they are going. You know, they are going. I, and I look at the website and really look good. Have some very nice photos. And today's sunshine. So what about we go there and we take some nice photos? And then my husband said. Oh, if you ask me, I prefer not to go because the history thing, mm-hmm. you know, he is a teacher. Yeah. And he is okay. I mean, he didn't like wash mind by the culture or the history, but he feels like he should respect to the culture. 
yeah. to the correct culture. Mm-hmm. So he enjoy a lot in Japan. He loves Japan people's decent, you know, the very polite act, acting, but. He feels are, like just don't touch that. Do. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, has, he, just, he has no yeah. problem with the people. Yeah, but no problems. I mean, also the people are different, right? These are different generations. Huh? I mean, yeah. that's what they say about Germany. Yeah. I mean, this is this is some of those people don't know what you're talking about. They are not Nazis. I mean, these are not the people that you know. Yeah. Um, so even if it was their grandparents, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean they're the same people. Correct. Right. Um, but okay, this is interesting. And what about the kids? The they kids went into the, t- into the temple. They enjoy. So he oh was no! A- Finally, we did. We didn't go. Ah, you also didn't go. You yeah. respected your husband, and you just stayed with him. That's yes. nice, actually. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. I yes. get that. Okay. So, um, so being in Japan, you travel there a couple times a year. Sometimes for uh, fun, for skiing, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes for 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 work. Yeah. So when you go for work to Japan. I, I go I to said, different cities. I said before, I have mm-hmm. a friend that uh, is a photographer, and I know that he got some jobs where he they just send him to Japan, walk the streets, look at the uh, fashion stores, windows, just step the pictures. Yeah. So Marcelo? Uh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> Atardo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, maybe he also did that. He did, yeah. Maybe he did that when you were too. talking about right. that, yeah. Right. There, there are foreigners that are sent to Japan to take pictures of what Japanese people are wearing. Mm. And then with that, then they create catalogs. Right, and, and then they create catalogs. This what is what you do. What is that? Yeah, yeah. this is a... Uh, okay, I, I, I really... I, I have to say, Japanese people are really fashion. Mm. Very fashionable. And they, they are dear. They dare to wear mm-hmm. every kind of clothing. They're very brave they with fashion. Wore. Exactly. Yes. And they are encouraging this as well. Say, you are you. Are you. Identity. You, yeah, you, you, you just do everything that you like. Just... You know, just based on that, you don't affecting other people. As crazy mm-hmm. as it may be. But in be. China, yeah. Yeah, it's very crazy okay, sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, this is a, like a culture shock with China. Mm-hmm. In China, like if you're wearing too, you know, too weird and then you think. But don't you think that's changing? Yeah, that's what I wanted to yeah, ask. It's changing now. I mean, you see people with pink hair, you see people in cosplay, yes, yes. you see people. Oh, but in Japan, tattoos. the cosplay is really different from what we see in it's China like now. way advanced. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. You can imagine all kind of fashion. Uh-huh. It's can wearing like a bird in in your in your <laughs> as a shoes. I you love. Know? I, I one of the things I enjoy the most, and it doesn't happen a lot. It's not like you see a lot of people here with pink hair, yeah. but they do see more than before. When I see someone here that is dressed obviously the way they want and with the blue with hair identity, I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I feel so happy. Okay, you know Chinese, you know have an identity. Oh, you guys express me yourself. Reminds me that well, uh, if I find something f- very free uh, abroad, this is I feel uh, free in in Japan because I really I really love dress up. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, not Dior or Gucci, but my own style. Right. Mm-hmm. So I love to wear hats mm-hmm. to dress to to match with my style. And um, but in China, sometimes if I go to work, it's still. You know, in in company inside office, it's still like a little a little bit strange. But even if it's a fashion and industry, but how to say the fashion still? My company is like a manufacturing. Mm. You know, I have to, I have to consider for both as both aspects, mm. not how just fashion. How much is this um, uh, individuality and this Japanese um, pursuit of their own style? Do you think we are getting now in China? Yes. How much of it? I mean, what what does it manifest? How does it manifest? Um, music, haircuts. Uh haircut, of course, for sure. Haircut, uh, makeup, mm-hmm. and the dress up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and also like accessories. For example, Japanese are very famous for uh, wearing accessories. Right. Bags and mm-hmm. especially hats, especially. Right. Right. So they will, they have a very super nice hair style, but they will have a very good, you know, hats on it. So when you take off the hat in China, we have a saying like, "If I don't wash my hairs today, tomorrow I wear a hat." Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but in Japan, not like this. Japan is like they they put on their hat, but still take off the hat. Their hairstyle is super so nice. So this is something that you, uh, the, before we asked, like you said, what we, you would bring back, right? What from other countries you travel, what is nicer there that 
China can have more of. Yes. I guess this is one thing. Expressing yourself. Yeah. It's in fashion. It's it's in many things really. Like yes. it's in what you do, right? Just letting yourself be yourself. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yeah. You you mentioned that you travel to a whole bunch of places, but you haven't been to the United States. Is that no. a place that you would like to go to? No. Why? I don't know why, but I don't feel good. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I it would has like it always to been be like that, or is it a recent thing? Uh, I think rec recent. You mean? Thing. Are you asking if it's political? No, yeah, I mean. No, I how to say? Um, I was more anxious to go to Europe instead of America because I don't feel America has with history. Mm -hmm. The feeling is like I, I. Looking, I was looking forward to go to Europe because I can see some Asian things, you know. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I visit Italy as well in okay. Rome, mm -hmm. and I especially uh, visiting the uh, Colosseum. The Colosseum. Colosseum. Yeah, I you was can feeling feel the history, right? Yeah, I was feeling so, so, so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great feeling. Uh, yeah, looking at the. I scene. mean, it's true that Europe, Europe is very deep, very old, very historical. You know, you go to places like that, mm -hmm. and you feel it in the air. Yeah. I, I had the same feeling when I came when I went first time to Gugong, to the Gugong, to, Forbidden to, 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 to Forbidden City, yeah. to Beijing, the square, the Tiananmen Square. It's like Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You feel it. It's in a the meaningful air. place. You, uh, the history you. feel something in the air you feel it right yes yeah us is 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 much younger right yeah yeah so maybe you don't get that maybe that i don't aspect. feel safe there you think that's that's a yeah. very important but you factor. haven't been there you think i you haven't been there safe. but you know in in on, online so many news you know you know you mm. can read every day so uh, the things you read in the media <laughs> 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 yeah you should. do you have access to western media yes do you have access to VPN. facebook to okay <laughs> vpn yes <laughs> yeah So USA, no interest whatsoever. Let's say you do go to USA. Where would you go? You mean where would you visit if you 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 had to go? You 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 went. You decided to go to a holiday or you, even your work sent you. Where where would you like to visit in currently currently in USA? Yes, if you went there. New York, like is it San New York Francisco, or LA? LA? New York, no, I don't. I don't. Oh, really? New York, just just a fresh, just a modern city. Yeah. Just yes. like Shanghai. Doesn't interest it's you? It's like Shanghai, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like Shanghai. Doesn't interest you? No. Mm. <laughs> I don't find, you know, very... Do you have, an Amer you have American friends? I do. You do? Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, but it still doesn't... But mainly in the field. I mean, in the industry. In the industry. The designers. Right. They want to be in Europe, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, you, you talked about traveling, and we've talked about a little bit about um, uh, your particular situation in terms of... Um, coming up from starting uh, on a very low in low paying job and getting to the point where you have real estate, you have cars and all these yeah. things. How much does it cost to travel? How how much of your budget do you dedicate to travel? You mean for percentage? Yeah, travel dual. <laughs> I think 20% of the income mm -hmm. for our family. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. So travel is very important for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. 15 to 20%, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I respect that. I think this is great. I think, you know, you, you spend your money on experiences, again, not on things. Yeah, because things that will I can tell from my kids. Yes. Yeah, they are, they are very, they feel easy. I mean, they feel comfortable everywhere now. Cool. So I think this is okay. I yeah. also wanted to ask you a question. Um, you say your kids. Everybody that's watching is always thinking, oh, China, one child policy. Um, was it a plan to have two children oh. or they passed the rule and like, let's have a baby or... <laughs> uh, for my son, I mean, my first kid is like a plan, mm -hmm. a plan for that. And then um, for my girl, it's like an accident. Ah, okay. A we lucky accident after the yeah. rule passed, or <laughs> We've all oh, been before, there. Yeah. before that, <laughs> yeah, like half year before that. Okay. Yeah, but still, we are happy, you know, to for of that. Of course. Yeah, but in China, you know, we have to like pay a punishment. Really? Uh, but uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. But, but like a penalty. Pa yes, a penalty. Yeah. But China used to have like. I'm talking hundreds of years ago. They used to have a lot of many kids, right? I mean, not many, but a lot. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. different, right? It's not like some people think. Oh, not China is one kid. They project not, not it. It's only for the last years, 50 no, years. No, not 100 years ago. Like my mother's. Yeah. My, like yeah. my mother, 
She has seven. Seven. Seven sister and brothers. They needed help in the countryside, right? So they <laughs> yeah. had a lot of kids. You yeah. Know, which is like other many countries in Europe. Uh, and, you do you know how many uncles and aunts I've had? A lot. Twelve. Twelve. You got On 12? my mother's side. Wow. Oh. I, have I, had, I had two aunts that were younger than me. <gasps> oh, really? So my grandpa wow. was. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just got one and one. That's it. Yeah. That's crazy. So, so the, the, the actually, uh, sorry for interruption. No, actually, start for controlling the babies starting my age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nineteen eighties. Yeah, yes, right. control very strictly. Yeah. Right, nineteen eighties. And then uh, they opened it up a few years. What three years ago? Two thousand sixteen. Three 15, years ago. Four, four years, years ago. ago four, four years, years ago, ago. They decided yeah. second child, two children yeah. policy, and then, and then they found out that. <laughs> Wait, we don't really want a second baby, right? A lot of people. A lot I of people are like, yeah, yeah, but no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like your conflict. But you there's know. a population yeah. problem. They need people to have more, right? Yeah, yeah it's a younger, demographic situation. To be younger. It's yeah. an aging population. You think they'll open yeah. it up for like whatever you want? Three? Or no, no? Two no? is good it's enough. Very, it's very measured in China, basically. It, it's in response to a particular situation that is happening. There's a very large percentage of the population that is going to be um, retiring very soon. Right. And then mm-hmm. the pension plans uh, need to be balanced. So they need young people to start contributing to pension exactly. yeah, so exactly. that those pensions can be paid. Wha- what about the... Uh, um, <laughs> this, is, this is interesting because there's a lot of Chinese traditions. Um, I know a bit. Chinese traditions that... Uh, may change, you know, with people like you, your, your generation now, your parents, and, and even younger people. And then what about the, like in China, you have to take care of your parents, right? Yeah. There is, there is this thing. Not everybody I the same, but... Not everybody, but it's like a And you have two like sisters, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're three. Yeah. Three yeah. sisters. Yes. Right. Do you have this thing that you, you know that uh, you will have to take care of your parents yeah. when they get older? Yeah, I start to give them money uh, monthly. Okay. Uh, years ago. Okay. Yeah, when I feel I'm, you know, I I, I should do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they are not young enough, and they are, they are not working, so they we have to take it. But I enjoy. I mean, I'm okay. Yeah, it's but yeah. you're not yeah. doing pleasure. you're not doing it because you have to. You're doing it because you want to. I think because half I know and half. Half and half. Half and half. Yeah. There is responsibility. Re- yeah, yeah, there's a sense That's of responsibility. Interesting. Yes. It's different for the Western culture. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, <laughs> years ago, different. years ago, maybe my, my parents were in a, uh, just a s- short, rough patch. And I was okay. And, mm-hmm. I, and I tell my dad, uh, Dad, I want to give you some money. Like, no, it, it wouldn't take money from me. Yes. It, it's, it's really the opposite in a way. But I mean, I, 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 I think it's great to do that because you want to. Yeah. Well, uh, you gotta you gotta look at the reasons for this. One of the main causes for this tradition or this practice is the fact that Chinese people um, were not able to own land. So when when the family wh- when the grandfather, for example, dies, there's nothing to pass down to to right. to the rest of the family. In right. the West, is different. So oh, yes. we keep accumulating fortune. So our parents uh, have inherited fortune that. For most of them, they don't need their children to look after them. Oh, yeah. exactly. In China, it's different. That was exactly. a good generation. You're right. Exactly, yes, right. yeah. Because there's no accumulation of wealth right. that has changed yes. now. But that and was then, the situation. And then the next generation has kind of Correct, kind but of you, screwed. you but have yeah. <laughs> real estate, you have income. Even when you stop working, you will have income, right. so you won't need that. That's the way it is in the West. Yes. Different eras, I guess, of economic. I think now <laughs> in China... It's changing the situation because like for my generation we start to we how say like me and my husband we don't expect that we our kids yeah. are raising us or taking care of us by using the money mm-hmm. um, when we are old but we are trying to you know to save and to buy some you know real estate to i have like an, an automatic income when we are old yeah yeah so it's like this chinese generation this Chinese generation is like our parents' generation mm-hmm. in the West. Oh, yes. yeah, in right, a way. right. Yeah. Are yeah. you so be ready to help your kids? Are you yeah. <laughs> are you rich? Do you consider yourself a rich Chinese person? Mm, talking about the money we have, not really rich, because middle the class. Sorry, middle class. Uh, okay, class. 
<laughs> because guess, in, in China, a lot of millionaires, you know, yes, a lot yes, of rich yes. people. I guess it depends what you compare it to. The reason that I that I uh, the reason why I ask this question because um, a lot of our viewers and a lot of our listeners probably when they when they hear about Chinese people, mm -hmm. they think either the very very poor farmers that live in you know way way in the mountains. And the very wealthy people that do ridiculous things like those uh, challenges, you know, like, oh, my wealth. Did you see those pictures on yeah, Instagram? But, but everything oh. is relative, really. Those are everything totally yeah. is relative. Yeah. China Let is me ask so it in a different big. way. What car do you drive? Oh, I drive Volvo now. A Rover? Yeah. All right. Volvo. 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 Yeah. Volvo. Volvo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a middle class, right? That's what actually a class, Chinese yeah. brand now. It's a Chinese <laughs> brand now. But anyway, but even, you know, right? Yeah. That's a middle class, like, uh, generally in the world. Yeah, in America, that will be a yeah. middle class right, car. Right, But yeah. that's what I'm saying. I mean, a lot of a lot of Westerners out there are, they don't have the picture of what a middle class Chinese oh, person is. Oh, correct, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, right. my friend, uh, she married a, um, uh, the South America, the very, the very South America. Mimi. South Mimi. America? Uh, husband. Her husband, I uh, forgot. Springfellow. Mimi yeah, Springfellow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. He's from South America. He's your friend? Yeah, no, her yeah, husband. Mimi. Oh, husband. I know yeah, him yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, you know him well? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Frank. Frank Stringfellow. Yeah, Frank. Skateboard. Mimi's, Mimi's Skateboard. Oh, no, 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 not, not no. that Mimi. Not that okay. Mimi. Not that Mimi, Mimi. yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, in South America. Yeah, South America. Okay, very, uh, very yeah, famous for very famous for beef. Beef, Argentina. Argentina, there yes, Argentina. And she uh, years ago when we have like a gathering, and she was, you know, we are we are sharing for the experience in abroad, and she said the first time she went to Argentina with her boyfriend that time, and the people think, you a Chinese girl, no. Chinese girl not like this. Chinese girl should be like very, very old-fashioned clothing. The Chibau. Chibau. Yeah, yeah, Chibau. yeah, yeah. Or the very, you know, the very 90s, 60s, this kind of... The Mao you know, Zedong blue, suit. Yeah, the, the blue <laughs> shape, this kind of ugly uh, clothing, not like that kind of fashion. Uh -huh. And can speak English. No, it's not like that. Right. So this is, I think, for quite a lot of foreign people, maybe they just seen the very extreme side of China, rich people and the very, like you said, in the remote mountain, very mm -hmm. poor farmers. Okay, ex it does exist in China because sure, China, sure, is sure. Super, it's yes. China is super, China is huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's, we have everything. We have millionaires, we have a lot of super rich people, but we have also the very, I think the very international people now, like you said, the middle class. Mm -hmm. And this is the mainstream of Chinese now, but but we do. But I mean, we live here a long time, Fernando yeah. and, and me, and and we do. You know, live in places where I go to my parking lot underground, mm -hmm. and there is a BMW and a few Porsches. And yeah. um, there are more you know, BMWs and, here and, and, than and, and, and in I Columbia. drive a BYD. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is a very uh, it's funny, huh? right? It's yeah, funny, right? It's I funny. drive the Chinese car. A lot car. of a lot of. Foreigners try BYD. No, but I mean, I think that it changed probably with, you know, people got more worldly, like people like you and other people got more worldly. They, you understand the world, you travel. I think like 15 years ago, people looked at me, Chinese people looked at me and just saw, oh, he's rich. Of course he's rich. How did he come here? He took an airplane. I mean, he's rich, right? Really, That's before. So interesting. Yeah. Before foreigners, no matter what you were, you were seen as rich. Right. Yes. And now the opposite is happening. And now you when understand Chinese people go abroad, <laughs> you, are more oh, rich. you must be rich. Yes. <laughs> yes. The Chinese, and I think the Chinese people here now also understand. I mean, actually, the local people have more money than most foreigners here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's like we got smarter. We understand better what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, BYD in Chinese would make jokes on it. BYD, Buyada. Buyada. Yeah. yeah, I know. Buyada. So it's not like the very, you know, I'm very, proud. Proud. I'm very proud. Proud. <laughs> means I don't want it. Yeah. Yes, I'm very yes. proud when I drive my build your dream. Well, I also build build your dream. Yeah. Oh. I also have a Chinese car. Yes, it's a neo car. Oh, Wei Lai. Wei Lai. It's, a nice it's, it's a very Chinese nice uh, yeah. high technology. But it's car. Chinese. I mean, I could have bought a Tesla or a neo, and I bought the neo because women that don't go. Oh, huh? uh -huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chinese. I'm I'm happy about the <laughs> Chinese car. I, I like it when the Chinese people look at me and I got a Chinese car. Yeah, I got a Chinese car. Chinese son-in-law. 
<laughs> ah, Chinese son-in-law, yeah. So, uh, so, so this, so the Chinese uh, 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 middle class, I guess this is how the Chinese middle class looks like, you know? Well, yeah. they don't all look like this, but Chabudu. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of foreigners, like we said, have uh, these misconceptions. They've never been to China. They don't understand. They see the Chinese people. Like you said, they've they seen Chinese people mm-hmm. travel there. Uh, spending money on stupid things, maybe some people do that, like and some yeah. foreigners do that, right? So um, yeah, this is something that uh, we want people to understand better. So we we really want to to thank you yeah. for well giving us your time. We know you're very busy, yeah, with your damn and with AI your denim. Uh, it's an authentic <laughs> island. Yeah, it's denim. not it's not yes. artificial intelligence, guys. It's AI <laughs> denim. Yes. So um, no, really, we want to thank you for for giving us your time, and uh, we appreciate you sharing um, your ideas and your perspectives with us. Thank you thank so you much for, for inviting me. I thank enjoy you for a being lot. here. All right, guys. So you know what to do. We are coming to the end of this video. So if you liked it, make sure to click the like button. And if you like the content of our channel, make sure to subscribe to it. And if you do that, don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out. And don't forget to follow us in all the social media it that speaks you really see fast. around yeah. here. And, and uh, until we see you again, take it easy.